When you establish secure communication from one party to another by means of making transmitted data difficult to read, this is called end-to-end -end encryption. The data is encrypted on the sender side so that only the intended recipient has practical possibilities to decrypt it. Malicious actors who can conceivably access the message on its way from sender to receiver should therefore not be able to read or change the content. I will in this video describe a novel encryption technique for use over a non-secure channel without previous shared secret. It is the Carex key exchange. Usually encryption is sorted as either symmetrical encryption or asymmetrical encryption. Asymmetrical encryption is often the term used to describe method to establish secure communication over a non-secure channel. Though one can think of reason why this terminology might not be correct. Most method within this category is built around prime numbers since factorization of prime products without brutal force testing are believed to be a problem not yet solved. There is also method based on lattice or elliptic curves. The novel method described in this video can be described as a key exchange. Close to the general description of the Daffy-Hellman exchange, although in practice Daffy-Hellman will make use of prime numbers, just as RSA, the perhaps most common prime number based asymmetrical encryption method. If we count the sum in the yellow frame, it doesn't matter if we start the sum horizontally and then vertically by the solution or start vertically and then horizontally by the solution. It gives the same result. It is because both addition and XOR operation are commutable operation. The encryption system which we are introducing here uses the same setup as the second grid. The column are selected by primary sender A, the rows are selected by primary receiver B. They will end up with the same solution for this to work B must also receive the solution from A since he doesn't know which column are chosen. The basic construction of this encryption scheme is the XOR table. A vector V is binary multiplied with a matrix M. For example, V and M. The resulting vector is horizontally merged using row-wise XOR. Here the process is shown along with common addition as a middle step. In an encryption setting, this corresponds to A constructs a secret vector and a public matrix. He then sends the matrix along with the result vector of his, obtained by and between secret vector and matrix, then horizontal XOR out to the right. Turned 90 degrees right, the same principle can also be applied to the next step. B multiplies his own secret vector with the matrix and gets an own result vector along with the merge of his secret vector and the solution sent, providing a common bit. He then sends his result vector back to A, who can get the common bit from the merge of his secret vector and this result vector from B. The problem with such simple approach is that a man in the middle are able to use binary Gaussian elimination to algorithmically calculate the secret vectors from the result vectors and the matrix. Can you tell us a bit about your background? Thank you. My background is fairly ordinary. Education-wise, I've studied electronics and then later chemistry. Nothing I work with has had a relation to computers or security, but I've always been interested in technology, programming, problem solving and uh, puzzles. So was it problem solving and puzzles that brought you into the subject of encryption? Yes, in a sense. I became interested in the issue of secure communication over a non-secure channel. 
It was a problem which caught my attention. And once I reached a degree of understanding, I followed through with my efforts to find a full solution. How would you describe this product? It creates a common key and click from key without previous codes or agreements. And it's really fast compared to existing algorithms. It is also fundamentally different as it uses binary matrices. And most methods within this area are built around prime numbers, lattices or elliptic curves. Gaussian elimination. Gaussian elimination perform row operation on the augmented matrix until the portion corresponding to the coefficient matrix is reduced to upper triangular form. The augmented matrix of a linear system is the matrix of the coefficient of the variable of the system and the vector of the constant of the system. Starting with the augmented matrix, row elimination produces a matrix in upper triangular form which is easy to solve. Example Solving these equations in matrix form Row 3 minus row 1 multiplied by 2 applied to row 3. Row 1 plus row 2 multiplied by 2 applied to row 2. Row 2 plus row 3 multiply by 7 applied to row 3. Now the variable of the matrix are immediately accessible. What about security? Can you guarantee that this method is truly safe? One could definitely make an argument since about 75% of the matrix information is off target. And because of the way methodic approaches to find out the core information is prevented, it should not be possible to get to the common keys without a great deal of brute force testing. In this animation, you can see the matrix and two secret vectors are randomly created at the site of A, the primary sender, while two different secret vectors are randomly created at the site of B, the primary receiver. Only the matrix is public. The vector are known by respective actors and is performed between the first secret vector of A row wise on each row of the matrix and the resulting matrix is or ed together to a preliminary vertical result vector the preliminary result vector is or ed together with the second secret vector of a into a secondary result vector The secondary result vector, the solution vector, is sent to B along with the matrix. At the site of the primary receiver, the matrix now and is performed between the first secret vector of B, but here column wise on each column of the matrix. ZOR is now applied vertically, generating a preliminary horizontal result vector. This preliminary result vector is now ZOR ED together with the second secret vector of B yielding a secondary result vector. Secretly B is now performing AND between the solution vector from A and his own first secret vector.
The resulting vector is the bitwise ZOR ED together. In this example, giving a single bit as common key at the site of B. The secondary result vector from before is sent back to A. At the site of primary sender, A is performing AND between his first secret vector and the secondary result vector sent by B. After which, bitwise ZOR is applied, again giving a single bit as common key but at the site of A. Unfortunately, the common key is not common. At the site of A, we get 0. At the site of B, we get 1. As you can see, the example bit in the end is mismatch. This example shows it isn't possible to ZOR with second hidden vector without certain rules for how the vectors are interrelated for A and B since these rules will be public. It is important to still allow or a recombinatorial richness within their boundaries. The proposition shown as follow is the use of block rules. Every block theoretically can comprise an arbitrary number of cells, either vertically or horizontally. To maximize the number of possibilities and reduce the risk of hacking by brute force, you want a balance of the number of blocks and the number of cells in each block. Here is a vertical block consisting of five rows. Each block is controlled either by A, green, or B, yellow. The one who controls the block either sets all his bits at zero or one, the entire part on this side will either be only 0 or 1. In this example, B yellow controls the block. B has chosen to set all his bits at 0. He has set his switch for the block to 0. The non-controlling part can set the bits in his part of the segment to any odd combination of bits. Or in this case, A has chosen to set 1 bit 1. In this example, N equals 4. However, the number of selected fields by A, green, is still odd, as always for any block, in this case 3. Also here B is the controller. He has chosen to switch the block on equal 1. This means that for this segment an odd number of 1 in the solution column will turn into an even number of 1, as publicly displayed towards a man in the middle. In this case, however, originally all solutions have been zero, which is even. Because the non-controller, here A, always, in this case, inverts an odd number of solutions, there will be an odd number of one as solutions for this segment publicly displayed. Remember, only red marked information is sent over the unsecured channel. All other information is either kept by A alone or B alone. In this case, it is publicly known that B is the switcher for this segment, but not if he has switched it on or off. In this case, A is the switcher. This means that he either switches the block on by turning all his bits in that block 1, or switches it off by turning all his bits 0. In this case, the block is switched off. The effect is the same for the block as if B had been the switcher. The difference is that A instead of B sits on the information, whether or not the block is switched. This means if he turns it on, he has to binary add 1 to his XOR tally sum. In the end, A as well as B has to binary add 1 for every block the respective part has switched on. Then their values will match each other. The sender A or the receiver B can be the switcher or the passive party in any block. The assignment of who is the switcher for each block is done randomly along with the creation of the matrix. Also along with the matrix, the block rules are randomly generated within a boundaries and publicly sent along the matrix and solution vector. 
A and B will use a common pseudo number generator seed to generate and regenerate the matrix and block rules. As in the previous example, AND is performed between A's first secret vector and the matrix. ZOR is applied giving a primary vertical result vector. which is ZOR ED again with the second secret vector of A. The secondary result vector is sent to B along with the matrix and block rules. Now first, when B knows the block rules, he produce his two secret vector within its boundaries. Secretly, AND is performed with the secondary result vector sent by A and the first secret vector of B. The secondary result vector is ZOR ED into a common key bit in this example. In the end, this resulting bit is ZOR ED once more with regards to number of switched on blocks under B's control. At the same time, the matrix is multiplied with the same first secret vector of B and merged into a single vector by using ZOR. This primary result vector is ZOR ED with B's second secret vector into a secondary result vector. This secondary result vector is sent back to A. A multiplies his first secret vector to the secondary result vector from B, which is then merged into a single common key bit. At the end, this resulting bit is ZOR ED with respect to number of switched on blocks under A's control. Random process equals non-deterministic, unpredictable. Machine equals deterministic, predictable. Pseudo-random number generator, PRNG. Pseudo-random number generator, a PRNG's number sequence is completely determined by the seed. Same seed equals same sequence. Input is a fixed value called seed. An algorithm that is used to produce an open-ended sequence of bit is called PRNG. This deterministic algorithm continues and goes on until the required number of bit is generated. The middle digit 14641 are 464 and so on. If you at the site of the sender start with the seed 121, you will get sequence 46452984. The receiver using the same shared seed will in the end get the same sequence. Binary number and digital numbers are exchangeable. Hence, PRNG can also be used in binary settings. Since the matrix and block rules are random, they can be produced from a seed on the site of A, and then reproduced by B from the same seed. This means A will send only the seed, thereby saving a lot of bandwidth. If A and B wants to use a single matrix to get a series of secret bits, it is easy to use multiple vectors on the same matrix. As always, the secret vector is multiplied with the matrix giving a result vector. Each secret vector is then multiplied with the matrix, rendering one result vector per secret vector. If a pseudo number generator and a seed are used anyway, it might be beneficial to instead produce and operate on 
a series of matrices. They are never sent, only the seed is, and therefore they will consume no extra bandwidth. Can you say anything about the future development and use case of this method of encryption? My hope is to be able to show the public the far reaching potential of this technique. There are inventions already developed which can be combined with it, for instance, in the protocol binding out generated uh, information together. Yes, using this technique in a new protocol could be considered the perfect match 